Okay, I'm reaching out to her now, but we're recording so you can begin. Okay, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, we do have a quorum, so I am um, going to uh, call the meeting to order. Um, I do want to say that this meeting is being held virtually uh, through the various acts of the state legislature. Um, and so everyone will have the opportunity, people will have the opportunity to, uh, for public comment, um, if um, they're in the audience, um, just raise your hand, or if you're on a phone, I think it's star nine, um, and uh, that's the, for raising your hand. So I will go through that again when, when we get to public comment. Um, so um, um, I do see if we have a quorum, so I will just call the meeting to order and go through a list of participants to see whether we can hear you and you can hear us. So I'm just going to go by what's on my screen. Andy? I'm here. Uh, Bernie? Present. Councilor Haneke? Present. Matt? Present. Kathy? You're muted. Trying to unmute. <laughs> well, Kathy's unmuting. Um, Alicia uh, texted back that she'll, she's on the way. Okay. I'm here. Okay, great. So um, let me see if there's any participants in the audience. Uh, the only attendee is Lynn. Um, so um, I think we'll we'll hold off on public comment. Uh, so the agenda uh, for those of you who haven't um, seen it, uh, where we have public comment number or call order public comment, then the CPA funding. We were going to try to review the annual audit, but it's not ready yet, so we can't look at that. Um, I would like to have a discussion of how we can review the budget, what process we think we want to use, and want some just people to throw out some ideas about how to improve um, not only our ability to review it, but uh, reducing the amount of time that staff members have to come before the committee. Um, and then uh, topics not reasonably um, uh, anticipated. So um, I'm going to wait on public comment because as I said, we don't have anybody right now. Um, so I'll, I'll, why don't we talk about um, the CPAC report? Um, so we've seen this before. Um, the basically um, they had, um, 2.376 million to spend and they want to spend 2.375 so they want to spend pretty much all of it um, the debt service out of that money is 520,000 um, and then um, the rest is going to be split between Community housing, historic preservation, and recreation. There were no open space um, uh, applications this year, and there's no administrative fees this year. So uh, the total of 681,000 for community housing, 564,000 for historic preservation, and 1.13 million for uh, recreation was being proposed. So um, I don't know if we want to, oh, hello, uh, uh, Councillor Walker, can you hear me? Can we hear you? Yes, I can. Thank you, Bob. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I was just going through um, the, um, the, the, the report that we have seen before. Um, does anyone not have it? Because I can send it to you if you need it. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to open it up. Um, I don't know if you want to go through, if we want to go through each of the projects, or maybe we should just kind of see general, uh, general comments. Um, personally, I thought all the projects were reasonable. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, there wasn't any, anything in there that I haven't seen. We haven't, we've, we've sort of done a lot of, sort of similar projects in the past. So Kathy? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, Bob. And actually, when um, we saw it a few 
weeks ago with Sam, we did go through the projects and Mandy and I will actually me at the council meeting and then Mandy again, we we had some comments about the Mount Zion Church, but it wasn't um, it wasn't a not going forward with it. It was just a concern. This may be the tip of the iceberg and yeah. it clearly needs to be done. So my hand went up mainly as I'm willing to make a motion, but we usually we have a we also have a financial order. So we make a motion that the council approve financial order dot 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 dot. So um I so that so I'm willing to do that, but but I'll let you make Mandy's hand is up. So I would have to word my motion to include the language of that financial order. Yeah. Um, what well, maybe while Mandy's making her comment, I can pull up the financial order for you. Thank you. It's twenty five oh seven a is the financial that. order. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I I basically agree um, with Kathy, um, except I have concerns about the East Amherst Local Historic District funds. Um, you know, I mentioned this last time, and I understand the project's um, value to the town, whether or not the historic district is um, ultimately formed or not. My bigger concern though in granting funds for a project are the application comments that the project would be supporting. So it's not the project necessarily I have huge concerns with. I have concerns that that would imply that we support the wording of the application. And as I stated about two meetings ago when we first discussed this, the application has some very concerning wording in it for me um, that I don't want to endorse, even if the project itself is ultimately that portion of the project, the the doing of the the um, the structures report, historic structures report, is ultimately valuable to the town. I don't want to vote for a project that has an application, and then would in theory have the town supporting an application that uses quotes like the construction of prefab shoddily built student hotels, which detract from and devalue the town and benefit only a handful of landlords, end quote, and also quote, rapid changes are occurring in the area, including a new school and a proposed adjacent overlay district that are impacting its historic character and integrity. Um, that are, first of all, there isn't a proposed adjacent overlay district, so it's just wrong, um, but, um, so I'm not sure what to do with that one on my own in terms of a vote, um, whether to ask that it be pulled off so I can register my non-recommendation on that. Um, but I, I really do want to disavow the application for the East Amherst Local Historic District because I believe the wording in it is not appropriate for us to endorse. Bernie? Yeah, I share the uh, counselor's concerns uh, as just expressed about the, the wording that's in that that application. I mean, <clears throat> um, forming a historic district should be um, an act of, of instruction and research and, um, you know, I, I, and, and something that's positive. So those comments are, are, are toxic, in, in my humble opinion. Um, I would not want to, uh, in sharing uh, that that sense as well, that I, I would not want this to be seen as authorizing a local historic district. It's more of a it, it's more of an investigation as to whether or not there's substance there. Um, I I just uh, uh, have uh, again I, I share the same 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 problems that, uh, with the application that Councilor Hannigan does. So if we were to um, not approve this particular application, um, would we send it back to CPAC for a different wording in the application or should we, what do people think we should do? Andy, have you done that in the past? What, 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 we, what do we do in the past where we have an issue like this? 
I don't think we've had one that's exactly like this. This is sort of a very unusual situation in that um, when we've had objections in the past to things, it has been something that was uh, pretty specific, like um, I'm trying to think the the house uh, the, that was last year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we had some serious concerns about it. Um, but I can't think of an analogy that's quite like this. And uh, I wish that we had said something to Sam at the time because uh, uh, though I I, th I I guess that I would recommend um, going back to Sam and the committee and asking them for uh, modification or clarification because uh, if my understanding is correct and uh, Athena can confirm that there's no reason that the council has to act on all of these things in one bundle and the deadline is really the end of the fiscal year so that uh, we really have time to um, dispose of the rest of them and put this and recommend putting this one on pause until there's clarification to meet standards that the committee defines. Okay, thank you. Kathy? Um, yeah, as Andy said, we, you know, he has longer years than I do, but I have the six. Um, so there was a year where one of the projects was more controversial and we wanted to make sure we got, had ample public time. I mean, it was, a, um, it was a, an affordable housing project on uh, coming into town. So we pulled it off pack out of the package approved the rest of the package and then separately looked at it and approved it in June I mean we did ultimately improve it but what I remember and Andy can correct me is the financial order itself then needs to be reworded because it takes it, in this case it would take twenty thousand dollars out um, and not have the same list in it and um, so if we were going to go that route, that is the way we went the other time, as opposed to just held the whole package, um, we pulled one out. So I, I, it seems to me, Andy, what you were saying is we could either wait on the whole package and tell Sam about these specific concerns and figure out what, if anything, they can do, because this was the applicant's wording and CPAC. I, I think he said everything was voted out unanimously, including by the historic, the, the, the members who are in on the planning board and the members who are representative from the other entities. So we could either hold the whole package with this concerned, or we could pull this out with a recommendation we move ahead on the rest. Um, so that's that would be my, I don't know which route. I personally would like to let the others move so we can just come back to just this one project. Um, and I'll stop talking. Thank you. Bernie? Yeah, I've I've had a considerable amount of experience with Community Preservation Act uh, activities, uh, albeit on a town level, not a city level. But I um, I believe that under the, the, the uh, statute, we could knock out the uh, the, the twenty thousand dollars for uh, the the local historic district and suggest that the council uh, approve the rest, and then let the uh, you know let the community preservation committee of the applicant um, come back and straighten things out. There's no this isn't a a one and done kind of situation. <clears throat> so we can either. Uh, my, so my suggestion would be that we strike the twenty thousand dollars and amend the order so that uh, that's not there, and forward that to uh, as our recommendation to uh, council. The council can put it back in if they want. So, uh, so just Bernie on amending the order, it's both the total up at top goes down by twenty, and then so people the line, can see down the at line the bottom. In the order, 
I, I'm it staring is, at this because I, I have my laptop screen and things are very small. Well, but there's two places <laughs> the total appears. East Amherst so. Historic District line just can be struck, uh, strike through. And the total at the top comes down by 20,000. And then the total down at the bottom comes down by 20, 20 and yeah. the remaining yeah. goes up by 20. I'm just saying there, there are three, there, there's more than one place that the yeah. numbers would have to change. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's accurate. Yeah. So just, just amend the document that way. Um, um, Bob, if I may, I don't think the committee needs to worry about um, changing this document or amending the document. The committee is just making a recommendation to the council to, you know, it, from okay. the conversation to approve those and not approve the the local historic district. So you don't need to worry about the changes. We would prepare a new order with, um, if the council decided to act that way with but the changed line. Okay, thank you. Matt? Thanks, Bob. Um, yeah, I, I, and I took it, I was initially asking to clarify that, that um, Councilor Haneke was, was objecting to the, which application, but I, I'm looking at the CPAC application now and I do see that problematic language in there. Um, I'm just wondering if if striking this outright is the only uh, is the only action to recommend. I, I certainly understand and agree that we don't want to necessarily endorse those two or three sentences, uh, but I also strongly, I mean, I agree that this is overall a, a very worthwhile project. And I'm wondering, could we um, indicate you know, some disapproval of that language or or just sort of a implied non-consent to that language, if that's a term, um, within our recommendation to the council. And, you know, I think the work itself is is important. And, you know, they are asked to demonstrate urgency for the report, for the work. And I, I think that they have. Um, so I just, I wonder if there's another mechanism by which we could indicate that we are not, and we're not the CPAC. So we're not the ones who approve this application. Um, you know, not to say that we shouldn't do due diligence, but um, CPAC did. And so I, I wonder if there's a space where we can sort of indicate that we don't support that language in particular um, while still allowing the project to move forward on the timeline. But Matt, what I was suggesting and the man who's coming in was that our our recommendation would be to send it back to CPAC to figure out what, what if anything could be done, you know, if they could address the language. So it wasn't a no way, Jose, for the 20, you know, that it's gone and that we would reflect that in the recommendation to the council on this one goes back to them with this concern. Um, yeah. So I wasn't just going to say we like everything, but not this one, but but more the concern about the wording, not not the concept of forming the district, potentially for forming the district. So I'll, yeah. I'll stop talking, but it was oh. a different kind of wording on what we would recommend to the council. And I did, I did understand if Bob, I can just respond. I, I did understand that. I was wondering if we could make a, a full recommendation to the council that included sort of, you know, concern about that wording. Councilor Haneke. Yeah, I, I don't know. This is why I brought it up, because I don't know which one is more appropriate. Um, but I do look at uh, my other concern in looking at the appropriation transfer order. It it literally says East Amherst Local Historic District, which was not actually the title of the project. And I think also miss implies what's going on with that. It's actually a study committee and hiring of a consultant to do things. And, you know, it, um, this is not forming a local historic district. I don't want, as, as Bernie said, I don't want any indication that this is endorsing a local historic district, although the structure, historical structure reports that would be created from this could be valuable. Um, I think we need to be very clear as to what is going on with this 20,000 number one. And I don't know whether the appropriate thing to do when there's a concern about the language of the application is to say no to the money, make a recommendation of not approving this and say, come back with an application that doesn't use, um, in Bernie's words, toxic language, um, or whether it's to approve the project and the money for the project because the project is worthwhile along with some sort of statement that says we do not endorse or condone the language in the application. I don't know which one is more effective or valuable, which is why I brought it up. 
Yeah. Bernie? Well, my, my thing would be simply two. We can do one of two only things. We can forward this order to the council with the recommendation that they approve everything except the $20,000 and outline the reasons why uh, we're, we're not in approval of this. Um, or we can send it back to the... Uh, 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 I think we're on shakier grounds if we send it back to the, uh, to the committee. Um, you know, it's up to the committee has a certain degree of independence and, and uh, what it comes down to is the appropriating authority, whether it's town meeting or town council, um, gets to say yes or no to the projects uh, in a wholesale. They can't amend them uh, and they can't certainly can't increase them and they can't amend them. So it's uh, it, 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 my preference would be that we advise the council that we are in, not in a, we are in agreement with the recommendations except for the East Amherst Local Historic District and the reason why we're not supporting the East Amherst Local Historic District is one, uh, this is, the, the uh, wording here is uh, uh, not accurate. This was a proposal for a historic structures study, uh, which would be the precursor to any attempt to form a historic district. That's one. And two, the language that was used in the application suggests um, that this is being done not as a, a way to further Amherst's history and distinction, but to inhibit or limit um, development. And uh, that's not uh, something that we're willing to endorse. So my, my thing would be is that, you know, we send this for, for order forward and say to the council, um, you know, I'm in the order to take this out and let, um, uh, let CPAC um, uh, wrestle with it. And they can always bring it back. Uh, Andy? Yeah, I agree with uh, the concept that Bernie is uh, generally putting forward because it, what we would really want to do is um, give the uh, applicant the opportunity to amend the language, but if they're not willing to accept the uh, suggestion we're making for a change in language, I think we need to know that from the from the source. You need to get to the get to the original applicant and make sure that the applicant is really on board with the change that we think is necessary. So uh, I guess I would tend to uh, recommend everything except that one line to tell them why we're not. We could go ahead and notify the committee uh, on by the finance committee, notifying the committee as to the reasons why and say that if they and the applicant can come to an, an agreement on amended language, um, that um, we would still have the opportunity to um, change, to, to recommend a different outcome for a different application within and get it done before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. Does someone want to make a motion to that effect? I agree. I think that's what we should do. Um, um Bob, I'm I'm prepared to, but I want to make a, a slight change to what Ber Bernie said. Um, um, you know, I think the concern is the language in the application is negative about all recent change. And suggest and suggest the goal is to inhibit all development. You know, they didn't explicitly say no development, but just not, you know, not to be as sweeping, but the, the word suggests. So that's the way I would word our, our sending it back. Okay. Mm -hmm. If people are comfortable with that, I can well that that's that's certainly that, that's certainly within the letter and spirit of what I was suggesting. I was okay. rambling off the top of my head. So 
So I make a motion to approve. I got a, can you scroll just up a little bit? What um, uh, would be to recommend? Yeah, I make a motion to recommend that the council approve appropriation and transfer order FY 2507A with the exception of the $20,000 for a study uh, for a potential East Amherst local history district. The concerns, we, we recommend that that item be removed from the approved list. The concerns with that- oh, let's history, let's, <laughs> let's include that part in the report. So your motion would be to recommend approval of the order with the exception of the okay. East Amherst Local Historic District in the amount of $20,000. Okay. Period. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. Thanks. And I, I wanted to word it accurately though. So the study uh, to consider an East, I realize that's not what it says, but as long as we 20 say 20,000, so we're accurate in our wording about what it is. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's correct procedure. And what I would uh, then consider doing is having a second motion that the committee then would uh, essentially move that um, on a, it communicate something to the CPA committee regarding modifications that it recommends so that the um, project itself can be um, be considered before the end of the grant year. Right. So can we do that motion second and, and take a, a point of order? I, I think we just need a second on your motion first, okay. Kathy. Is there a second? I was going to second. second it. Thank you. And then I was going to make a comment. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I, I think I agree with Andy, a second motion, but what I wonder is whether that second motion is also a recommendation that the council communicate to the CPA committee, not that the finance committee communicate. I feel like it should be coming from the council, not the finance committee. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So let's, why don't we, uh, we vote on the motion at, does, is there any other comment on the motion, the one at hand? <laughs> okay, so um, why don't we? We'll start. I'll start. I'll 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 say yay, uh, Council Henneke. Aye. Matt. Support. Kathy. Yes. Bernie. Support. Uh, uh, Councilor Walker. Yes. Uh, Andy. Yes. Okay, so it's unanimous. Now the second, uh, does uh, someone want to put some language forward for the second, which is for the council to uh, recommend to, to communicate to CPAC our concerns? Um, I can take a stab at that and everyone can edit my words. Up. <laughs> I, I make a motion that we re recommend that the council communicate with CPAC two concerns about the $20,000 award for a study for an East Amherst Historical so uh, Society. The first is that the way it was worded in the financial order implied that it already exists. It needs to be changed to the study. The second is the language in the application is negative about recent changes and suggests the goal is to inhibit all development. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, any additional discussion? Okay, why don't we vote on the motion then? Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Matt? Support. Kathy? Yes. Bernie? Support. Councilor Walker? Yes. Andy? Yes. And I vote yes. So again, we have a unanimous um, vote.
boat um, and two sports. So I think that's it on CPA. Does anyone else want to say anything more about CPA? No, I don't know. You know, and when you write up the report, Bob, I, I think it was generally an excellent set of projects so, so that, you know, I, I would put some general positive wording on our, um, it, it was quite well balanced and um, a lot of, it, it, just something that says something nice about the, and we thank CPA for their work, you know. Yes. Okay, I will do that. Um, so the next item was the going to be the audit, which is not ready. So uh, why don't we discuss our budget review process? Um, what we've done in the past is um, we've divided up the budget um, into uh, you know by 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 um, department. Um, and we each one of us, each each person on the on the committee would take one department and take a deep dive in into that particular part of the um, of the, the budget and uh, take questions from the other committee members um, and then um, kind of submit those questions to the department uh, and have them when they come before us, they would have these questions ahead of time for the most part. Um, I don't know whether that is the way we want to go ahead. Um, I'm open to anyone's suggestions. I know it's a very tedious process <laughs> uh, for us and for the staff. Um, and uh, so if there's any way that you can think of to streamline things, um, Maybe uh, well, any any. I'm open to suggestions, so feel free. Kathy, yeah, I don't. I want to make sure I word this in a way that it's not negative about any uh, element of what our town is doing. But we have some departments that are one person or two person departments, and. We don't give them completely equal time, but we do divide a time. And then we have departments that are a major share of our funds. Um, and I think the departments that are a major share of our funds, aside from what they're currently budgeted for, hearing from them about either the stress um, of current staffing, turnover, other things that we wouldn't naturally get. Because although we're dealing with a budget, we can't easily, well, we can't increase any amount of money that's been allocated to them. So I don't know whether there is a way of grouping what I will call the smaller um, and, uh, and then uh, so removing some of the meetings and then leaving some time with the others where the understanding is uh, respond to the questions that we've presented and then um, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, from the ground level up to us um, about their budget. So that's one thought. The second, and I have no idea how we live with this, is we know the budget guidelines, despite the increase to 4%, are a major source of concern for the schools, particularly the regional schools. So that seems, that's going to need, we're going to need some guidance on how we even have a discussion about that, because the town, unless Paul miraculously finds a million dollars, um, the town doesn't have a place for what the school committee seems to be suggesting would be a budget that's coming to us. So that's where I don't know how we handle that one. Um, but we can't avoid that discussion. So we just have to have it. And I've been actually looking at budgets and issues of staffing and, you know, is there some belt tightening that could happen? But I'm not sure. I don't think it comes to a million. So that's my, just my my thinking about this. Um, 
And 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 in the meantime, I mean, there's not much of a meantime between now and May on on if uh, the work like Andy talked about the work at MMA, if if Chapter 70 miraculously had a chunk more money, if something could come that would ease the stress in the schools, it would be great. So I would schedule them later rather than earlier. <laughs> And when we're meeting, so I'll stop talking there because those are my thoughts on fewer meetings, but more focus. Yeah. Councillor Hanneke. Yeah. Um, so this is my first year on finance. So I've come in and out of the budget sort of meetings in May from finance committee when it's held them on departments I'm interested in. So I'm, I'm not fully, you know, engrossed in what finance has done in the past, but um, a couple of things. I'm curious whether finance has ever actually taken our budget guidelines, looked at the manager's budget, and made an affirmative determination if that the manager's budget meets the guidelines. Um, because, you know, the department meetings are great, but from my experience, many of the questions are, uh, and those meetings happen too late because the budget's the budget. And we can't really, I mean, we can decrease it, um, but if it meets the financial guidelines that we've issued, do we have a reason to decrease it, right? Um, have we ever, has finance ever sort of made that determination? And so that's sort of where I'm starting with is, shouldn't we first be comparing the budget to the financial guidelines and saying it meets our guidelines or it doesn't meet the guidelines? And then I think the question becomes, what do we do about all the questions we have about the individual departments and when are they most appropriate to happen? And I'm just not sure that it's most appropriate or most, Appropriate's not the right word, most useful for them to happen in May after a budget is in front of us versus in the time where we're developing budget mm -hmm. guidelines and before we're developing guidelines to be able to ask more general questions about departments in the vein of what Kathy um, just indicated about wh where is the stress, what is the staffing, what, what issues are you having those much more general ones. And so I guess I'd kind of like to see a much more streamlined, focused May on does the budget meet the guidelines and then maybe move a lot of these department meetings to August, September, when we can talk in more generalities in order to develop the guidelines for the next year. Andy? Uh, yeah, first of all, just as to point out that the way we've organized the department presentations was by functional area in the past. So we do public safety all in a bundle and we do uh, the and you, you you track the budget and it goes but it comes out of the budget, which really is organized around uh, what the state, um, requirements are the, uh, the, the local services and how they organize presentations of budgets so that sort of filters down to the committee, but we don't have to do it that way. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, the other, um, and I, I, I do think that it's right that um, Mandy has a good point uh, that we sort of know that the budget just by looking at it in by the presentation from town manager that it is responding to the guidelines and uh but um the uh there are a number of departments that uh, you know are pretty straightforward and we spend a lot we spend time on them and take their time uh and, and really need to think about that the schools is the big issue, and I think Kathy's right, which is really when I raised my hand. And the timing problem is the regional schools. And we can't avoid 
the fact that the regional school issue has to be dealt with in line with the other town meetings um, in the other three towns and the regional school process because uh, you know, once three towns have approved the budget, it's done uh, unless, except for the uh, question of the assessment methodology, which takes four towns to approve. And uh, I think that that's where the big pressure is going to be. That's what the million dollar request is about. So uh, I, I think that it's important that uh, we think about that and recognize that we always take that out of cycle and take it first because of the uh, fact that it coincides with the process that involves three town meetings in, in, in towns that are the other part of the region. Yeah, that is a that's a that's a good point, Andy. Uh, we we can't really postpone our discussion of that uh, to a later date because there is no later date, really. <laughs> um, anyone else have any thoughts? Okay. Well, I think I just I don't think we need to decide this now. I just thought I wanted to start the process of thinking about it, I will write down a couple of thoughts about, you know, how we might proceed. Um, and uh, I'll bring the points up that, that uh, Councilor Haneke raised as well. So, Kathy? Yeah, I, I don't want to stop the conversation on this because I was going to bring up another topic and it would be a... 48 hour rule, but not really. It's like future agenda item kind of uh, thing. So Andy, if you're still speaking on this, um, go before me. Yeah, no, I, I think that we need to actually um, just make sure that we schedule the regional budget presentation pretty quickly and that um, we think through very carefully how we're going to approach that in the information that we're asking. We can't delve into the budgets of the school committee because it's really um, ultimately their decision as to what they do. So it's not that you can say, oh, why do you need this uh, item or why do you need that item and try and second guess their budgets. But on the other hand, I think that we do have to make the point that has concerned me for several years about the schools, that there's a trend and they just continue to put together budget proposals for the towns and, this, and for us as a city that uh, are what they, a, a strategy for the year at hand but they don't think ahead. It's not a long-term strategy of what it is that we're doing because um, we pointed out a year ago that you know this train wreck was coming and here we are with the train wreck and they didn't do anything differently except put together a budget based upon the same principles that they use every year level services, cost of level services, and what cuts are necessary. Councilor Haneke? Um, Bernie can go next. Okay, Bernie? Thank you. Um, yeah, this, the, the, I mean, the budget reviews are kind of, they're, they're, they're an interesting thing, and because it's not like the Finance Committee is shaping the budget. The Finance Committee is commenting on the adequacy of the budget and um, <clears throat> offering some judgment of the, the you know, the, the town manager's ability to put this stuff together. The other thing that we do do is we do expect each of the departments to manage with the amount of money that's been allocated. Um, the school committee seems to think it's an exception to that, um, that, uh, 
Uh, and I, I frankly was very troubled by the remarks that were made that, well, we're going to add a million dollars into it and let them figure out how to fund it. That's not how you manage a budget. <laughs> so I, I think that the suggestion that we, uh, uh, that for the future, that department heads get interviewed um, in September, October, when there's the opportunity for the finance committee and in, in particular and then the council uh, after that to make recommendation to the manager that you, you really need to pay more attention here. Or we need to make these adjustments there. What we're doing now is just saying, yeah, this looks adequate. Um, so uh, it, it's, a, it's a strange situation to be in. And I do agree that we have to have the school discussion up front. And that's 60% of it's sixty percent of our budget. Sixty percent of our revenues go there. Thanks, Captain Haneke. Yeah, thank you. I I agree. We should be. I guess it's technically asking the manager to forward the regional school budget to the com council for referral to the <laughs> finance committee sooner rather than later, so we can start on those discussions. Um, I, I think it would be valuable. Um, I, and I think there also has to be either a public hearing or a public forum. I'm not sure which, and we should get that on a schedule probably sometime in April. Um, we probably need to discuss from a finance committee point of view, if there's any um, recommendation from finance committee as to when it thinks the council should vote on a regional school budget and when it thinks finance should make a recommendation looking at when the other towns are holding their town meetings. Um, I'd also like a discussion, although I can make suggestions now, as to who from the school district and school committee we ask to show up to our discussion on the budget. In the past, I think we've generally had the superintendent um, and the finance director, I'm not sure there is a finance director at the schools um, right now, but given the school committee, the regional school committee is the body that voted not to follow our financial recommendations, guidelines, I think it would be valuable to invite members of the regional school committee to the hearings. Kathy? Um, I am staying on this topic. Um, if we put that together, the other thing I'd like to do is gather our questions sooner rather than later, um, including if we have requests for data, because often we requested data that's trend data that wasn't readily available in terms of in somebody's hand and Yes, um, some of us can go find it on DESI maybe, but having it be, you know, not codified by the school. So I would just like to gather some of that or those questions earlier. So the team, I know how stressed they are, stretched and stressed they are in the staffing because the acting superintendent, as far as I know, is still the finance director. So with a t there is a team working with him, but, you know, Doug, made the comment at the four towns meeting when someone said, I'm looking at enrollment after the last four or five years and it's down and it looks like employment is up, staffing is up. And Doug quietly said, yes, actually the student to teacher ratio has declined, you know, I mean, in a, in a classroom and a classroom level, but I just think trying to get some sense of to, of what lies underneath these numbers without going to individual lines. Um, and so just gathering our questions earlier so that we can get some response on these. You know, the the what I mentioned last night, and I probably will just say it again, is um, when I look at what the charter school is taking out of the region in terms of per student, and then I look at the charter operating budgets, we're overpaying them, you know, in terms of their operating costs, but we're helping because other towns don't pay as much because their average costs are lower, <laughs> you know, so the kids coming, I just picked one or two schools, the kids coming from 
South Hadley, the amount they're sending to a specific ch charter school is much less than what we're sending. So we we are in fact creating a margin in the schools. I mean, so it's just many ways of looking at this is this isn't right, um, the way it's working. And it is one of um, those, um, long -term, um, it's a long-term well, stretch I'm, I'm structural problem. In. So it's a structural yeah, yeah, problem. Me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in with a point of order here. I don't want to, the committee to get too far into the weeds about the regional school budget when you know the discussion is about the the process um so i've just i just want to point out that we're we're getting into it a little bit and and also in terms of scheduling um right now we're expecting doug to present the regional school budget on april 1st and bob and i had to discuss potentially um, April 29th, um, Monday evening, public hearing on the regional school budget. So your answer to getting the questions early is like, we'd have to have them now. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. So does everyone agree with the, the, the schedule that, that Athena just talked about? I mean, we have opportunity to go uh, to do it earlier if people want to do it. Um, we can begin our review on, eight, we have a meeting on April 2nd, I think. Um, we can, um, we could begin the review if, if Doug presents it on the, the first, we can start looking through it. I don't know that we'll be ready to discuss it on the second. We may have to live with it for a while. Um, so we we had scheduled that for the 16th, um, just so to give people a couple of weeks to live with the budget. Um, does that make sense? To, or we, to, to, to people, I mean, we can, we can come back and we can revisit this, but um, Andy, you have any thoughts? Um, I think that we have to have also a question as to whether we need to move the hearing to an earlier date. I th um, suspect that the hearing is going to generate uh, as much interest as the ARPA funds discussion did at the council meeting last night and that uh, we're going to hear a lot and there needs to be a uh, question in our, you know, as a matter of process, whether uh, there, need, there has to be some time to deal with the repercussions or the follow-up to whatever happens at, at the hearing. So I just wanted to put that out there for just consideration as we talk about process. Um, Bob and I had discussed um, the 29th because the week before is the first night, I think of Rosh Hashanah and the week before that, that is a school vacation week. So if the committee was interested in doing on a, on a different evening, um, I can poll for dates. We had selected a Monday evening rather than the committee's regular meeting time to improve public access. Any thoughts? Councilor Haneke, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I was just gonna try and confirm when when Athena named a Monday night, this is, it's being called as a finance committee public hearing, right? Um, we're not so, trying to put right, it on so, um, at a council meeting. Well, the council might, it might be dual noticed, but it's not being tried correct. to so be what we had talked about at a council meeting. Um, correct. So what we had talked about in the past was that it, the hearing is required by the charter to be a finance committee hearing. Um, in the past, we have posted it as a finance and council hearing because I think we've always done it before a council meeting, um, but it doesn't need to be a council meeting. This is an opportunity for members of the committee and counselors who wish to attend to hear from the public and there's not a discussion um, 
needed on that evening. So um, the idea this year was to post it as just a finance committee meeting and invite counselors to sit in the audience to listen. So uh, I, I guess, you know, I, I would like to see it, I think, before April 29th, because we can't really have a good discussion in finance until we've had that public hearing on it. I mean, we can have a good discussion, but we can't finish our discussion until after the public hearing. And uh, it's my understanding that two of the towns are having their town meetings on the 27th of April. Am I, I, I think I'm correct on that. And the other one is sometime in May, which means we would already have their results before we even hold our public hearing, which seems kind of strange to me. Um, not, a, you know, versus voting sometime after we know the results, but I feel like holding the public hearing before the town meetings, other town meetings have voted on the regional school budget is more logical. If there's no objection, I can pull the committee for evening dates um, before the 29th, and we can figure out what evening works for everyone. Yeah, I, I, I think, Athena, let's let's see if we can get something before the, in something in the week after the, the week of April 1. I guess there's a, there's a council meeting on the 8th, is that correct? Um, maybe that week? Yes, um, that's right. Maybe that week we could we could try to because I, I agree with Andy that the the, 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 the the public hearing is going to take a long time <laughs> um, or we should expect it to take a long time. So I would think that we should have maybe a separate meeting just of the finance committee um, and, uh, you know, other counselors who want to attend and just let people talk. Because I think there'll be a lot of comment. So it sounds like I should pull for the week of April 8th, a different evening during the week of April 8th. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Is that, does that sound okay to people? I mean, I don't have my, my calendar myself, but. Um... I think that week or the week of the 15th, I know the week of the 15th is school vacation week, but the hearing would be on zoom. So it's. Yeah a little less, I feel, I feel like it's a little less problematic to try and do a school hearing during school vacation week when people can attend from anywhere. That doesn't mean it isn't problematic, but it's less problematic. <laughs> okay, I'll, I will pull for meeting dates for those two weeks. Okay, so does anyone else have anything else to say about this? Um, one, I had a question um, about going back to the, um, when should we talk to the various department heads? Do um, I don't have a problem with doing it in the so August, September timeframe. The question I have is whether we should not have those conversations in May um this year and just have a review of the the budget as uh councillor haneke has suggested to see whether it's within the it, it meets the guidelines or should we sort of have a conversation with the the department heads for this year's budget and then talk about next year's budget in september i wasn't clear what the thoughts were on that Kathy? I'm not sure what Mandy had in mind, but if we think of our guidelines, with the exception of town services, everything, um, it's this much library increase, this much schools. Then we have a lot of wording about sustainability and roads are important and public safety. And so that is one set of budgets. And so there's one thing we could have a lot of conversation about. <laughs> um, that is what Bernie just, that leaves out 60, 
2% or 65% of the budget if we're putting the schools in another bucket. So I'm, I'm, Mandy, I'm not sure what you had in mind because our guidelines set up a, a uniformity. Um, um, and we, you know, even if, you know, I asked quickly and said, forget it, you know, on library, but what is the li what would the discussion about the library be? We we said this much of an increase and they're good that's what they're gonna no one's coming in under what we suggested. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Other than this, it's a big group of activities. Um, and that could be a discussion on, you know, what we're allocating to all of those other things. Um, so I'll just stop there because it it's a it's one long meeting then, but it's not on multiple departments very easily. Councillor Haneke. So, the guidelines are very extensive. Some of them go towards the numbers, as Kathy said, is this one at 4% or lower? Is this one at 4% or lower? All of that. Um, but others go to sort of how is the money being used, where I think there could be some questions, but I don't necessarily think it has to be by department per se. Um, you know, if we, I'd have to go back and review the guidelines, but but to talk about Kathy's sustainability, well, we could ask questions that say, okay, determine, you know, give us information as to how this budget meets those guidelines on sustainability. We could potentially have a couple meetings on different parts of the guidelines during the budget process. And then, you know, I guess one of the things I'm envisioning for department meetings, if we were to do that, why I'm not sure they're necessarily helpful in May is because in May, we're so focused on a budget we can't do much about, instead of focused on the guidelines where we can write those things in about sustainability or public safety services or things like that. And I think if we do those those meetings in September or October, we would be more focused and more forward looking on our questions, less likely to potentially get into the nitty gritty that maybe the council's not supposed to be in on and more likely to be talking about much more of the guidance, the policy direction of the town when we're not staring at a number that has been proposed um, when we're looking forward to that. So I think there could be a way to organize May in a lot less meetings than finance has done in the past, but around different sections of the guidelines as it relates to the operating budget, the capital budget, any particular things we said we wanna see focused on and things like that. So it wouldn't necessarily be one long meeting, um, okay. But but I think it could be split. But I think it would take a lot less pressure off finance to meet twice a week for four weeks, because um, we might be able to do it in four meetings then instead of eight or nine. Um, Anyone have any? I I, I like it, Mandy. That was helpful because you're picking out something in the guidelines that's cross-cutting to have, yeah, rather than, yeah. Well, okay. I, 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 there's, there's a lot of thoughts swirling through my head. <laughs> this has been a very good discussion. Um, so I think we should, you know, maybe just finish up this part of the discussion, um, you know, we have time to to really plan what we want to do in May. So um, I just wanted to get started on it. And I think we've gotten some really good ideas. Um, and um, I, I, I'd like I like Councillor Haneke's idea of looking at sections of the guidelines and seeing you know, I want to sit down with the guidelines again and see if, you know, how would we do that <laughs> um, to make it meaningful. So, uh, but uh, this has been very helpful. Um, so uh, I've been checking on the participants and uh, we still have no public attendees other than Lynn. So um, 
there's really no need for public comment. Um, and I don't think we saw the minutes. I don't think, uh, Athena, do we have the minutes? I haven't seen the minutes of March 5th, so I haven't had a chance to review them. No, I, no, I don't I don't have them in the packet. I, I didn't have a chance to put a packet together, but I do have drafts, so I'll get those to you. Okay, thank you. So, um, Kathy, did you want to? Yeah, but I see Holly's hand went up, so let's take Holly. Holly first. Uh, I was just going to comment that it looks like Lynn's hand is up in the attendees. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, Lynn? Hi, first of all, I love this discussion about the guidelines and so forth, but my raised my hand uh, earlier because um, I personally believe that it is important for every council counselor to be visible during a hearing about the school budget. And uh, as a counselor who would not be visible, uh, it makes doesn't make the audience feel like the rest of us are listening. So uh, it's always a decision of the chair of the committee and the committee as to whether or not they want to open that to as a committee of the whole, but I strongly urge it because I think, as I've said, it's important for the public to know we are all listening. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks you, Lynn. Uh, that's a good thought. Um, Kathy? Okay, mine is just a future agenda item for when you're working with Paul and Athena and the rest of the ABLE town staff. I would like to get some sense of the buildings and where they are in terms of fire station and siting. And we're in, we are going to be we're, we see it in a spreadsheet, but just schedule something when it makes sense so that we have it on the list that we can hear um, whether there is a plan on making a decision. So, so that's it's just a request for an agenda item um, for what I would call the missing buildings. <laughs> the, the plan for two more. Um, you know, and I do know what the plan, you know, the, the plan as of five or six years ago, but just, you know, trying to to get some sense of after I serve out my third term, which will be seven years, will I be leaving where there is actually momentum or will we still be <laughs> talking about it? So and that would be coupled with status of reserves, you know, um, sort of money. So just sort of a robust discussion that allows for discussion. That's it. It's an agenda item for when it makes sense, but not next year. No, I, I agree. It has to be sooner rather than later. I have the same questions that you have, like, where are we going with these buildings? I mean, we didn't see, I didn't see the the fire station in this, the, uh, JCPC report. So. I think it's because it's a five-year plan. So that, <laughs> but That's a little scary. I, I inferred it's in the tenure her. You know, it's in, it's in well, the, I, you know. So in any case, yes. If that's what the plan is, then we need to know because I think we, you know, I had a constituent say when they moved here like twenty years ago, twenty-five years ago, they they were promised a fire station. <laughs> so. Andy, did you want to add? Yeah, no, I think that this is actually a good add on to the discussion to bring the capital projects in because it circles back to uh, the consequence of a regional budget being voted by the four towns that adds $800,000 to our budget because then we have to cope with how do we pay for it? And it ultimately comes down to one of three things. We either devastate the municipal budget, we uh, go to reserves, and then affects the uh, capital projects 
or we ask for an override and see if the voters will willing to go for that. And there's timing questions with that one, because if you do an override, there's also when do you do the override and how, how does it get presented? So this is a uh, raising a whole lot of issues that I think that as a finance committee, we need to um, get our hands around in a real discussion when it's on the agenda. And one of the factors that I just threw out there uh, was the capital. And if we um, don't have a handle on the capital plan that Kathy was suggesting we need, then um, how do we address the question of what the effect would be of uh, making a decision to use uh, some of our current stabilization funds to uh, fund that eight hundred thousand dollars or eight hundred and fifty or whatever exact amount is um, that would be our share of the million dollars uh, that the region would be voting that we would be obligated to pay. So I, uh, I think that it is important that we have that discussion and it may be important to have it soon enough that it is something that we can consider as we have this other discussion. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think if we're gonna have it, we need to, you know, I'm looking at, you know, we're making a recommendation on the regional school budget in the May 3rd, uh, May 3rd meeting. We're, we're gonna have to have that discussion beforehand. Um, so uh, let me ask Paul, Paul, do you think that the, uh, that, that we'll have all the information available to, you know, will we have the projections um, by that time in, in the next, sort of two to three weeks projections for uh on the school no no on the on the capital projects capital right. projects um it might be a challenge because we're really focused on the operating budget now um we're finishing up our budget hearings later this week um but i heard the, the entire discussion i totally agree with your assessment of the timing of things we're also our the bigger priority right now is to look at what a potential uh additional funding for the schools would look like. We're projecting that out and we're projecting that out over multiple years, what that looks like. So we have a rough draft of that. Uh, whether we could get it in April or not, I can't guarantee that just yeah. given the, the crunch of the budget. Uh, but I understand you'd want it in certainly in May. Um, okay. All right. Good idea. Um, anyone else have anything? They want to say, add. Okay. Well, thanks. It's been, didn't have that much to talk about today, but uh, our th thought our discussion was very good, uh, very helpful, and um, we'll uh, try to get these things scheduled out over the next couple of meetings. All right. With Thank that, you. is there? I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask for that. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion. Um, Kathy? Yes. Bernie? Support. Matt? Support. Councillor Walker? Yes. Andy? Yes. Ami, yes. Councillor Haneke? Aye. All right, we are adjourned at 3.15 p.m. Take care, everybody.